the one thing we don't realize is going on in society now. And God, is, he shows me in dreams. He shows me in visions. There are times I'll be sitting in my living room and I can see a face looking at me. It's not an angelic face. It's not a face from heaven. And I know that, that the devil has got a lot of his demons out there doing the same surveillance that 5G is doing. He's got his imps and his uh, assigned uh, spirits out there doing surveillance on God's people. And they're checking out where we are. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. They're checking out where we are. And then in dreams, there are times when I'm dozing off and I see a demonic face literally staring at me. He ain't doing nothing, ain't saying nothing, staring at me. And I repeat it in the name of Jesus, or I just go to sleep because I can tell he's not there to do anything. He's just on surveillance. He's like, whatever, bore yourself to sleep because I'm going to sleep. You ain't going to see nothing here. So the bottom line is there are times when the same way that the devil has surveillance going on, the devil also has spirits of perversion. Just a yep. week ago, one week ago, I'm dreaming, I ain't seeing no demons, but I'm sitting up there witnessing a man in the bed playing with another man's private parts. Oh, and I woke up and I said, ain't that a trip? Now what the heck? It was mm. nothing else, you know, but demons of perversion. You ain't thinking about it. You ain't watching the movies that have that crap in it. You're not right. adjusting that into your eye gate, ear gate, whatever gate. You ain't messing with that mess. You're not looking at magazines, the internet, naked crap. You're not looking at any of that. But spirits of perversion will bring the images of stuff that has nothing to do with your life, nothing to do with your interests. To get right. the spirit of lust to get you all worked up. I mean, see, what we don't realize is these demons don't find rest unless they have a host. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're always trying to get in. They're always trying to get a crack in the door. Right. You hear me? If you got a flood coming and your door is not securely barred up, locked up and, 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 and secured, that flood is going to bust those doors wide open. Mm -hmm. If there's the slightest crack, the slightest weak spot, but if that door is secure, it's bolted, it's, it's from top to bottom, side to side, it is totally uh, bolted down, and it cannot be pushed open unless a, a freight train comes through there. You might have a little seepage from the water, but you're not going to have the water mess up your house. May, may I add something to that too? Of with course. the word Yeah. Um, when we're talking about perverted thoughts and dreams and stuff, it's, so it's like you ask yourself, where did that come from? I'm, I'm not even thinking anything like that. Right. Well, um, another uh, minister was saying that she um, had a friend over, somebody she, she knew from church. And I guess they spent the night over there, and she said she got attacked with the most horrible homosexual dreams, right? Wow. And she, and, and she said, she said, Lord, now I know I'm not into nothing like that. What's going on? So the Lord told her to, to confront that, that sister from, from, from church uh, to confront her. Right. And she, she asked her, she said, you know, what's going on with you? And, and the first the young lady tried to, you know, play it off, play, play dumb. But what happened was, I guess she had either had been involved with somebody that was doing that, or there was a door open, just right. to make a long story short, that that young lady had opened. And what happened was, it that spirit jumped off on her, but it didn't attack uh, Minister Dixon in her house. And she said, faces. She said she saw when people might be uh, peeking around in, in pornography. Right. You know, they might be they might be in, into fornication, or they might be into drugs or something like that. Because I've had dreams about things that had nothing to do with me, but it's almost as if I'm in the dream and I'm doing it. Right. And the Lord reminded me. He said, "You're you're an intercessor, and you have to remember that you know God is going to expose and sin in the camp." So. That's a 
another thing, uh, you know, that's, that's what we have to be on guard for, to also be protect, to protect our, our church from any unclean spirits getting in, because people don't understand and realize that as a part of the body of Christ, or one of the body of Christ is doing anything, it affects us all, so that's right. God's going to definitely put it out there, and that's dangerous, you know, because somebody in the churches, you know that, you know, because you said that one church you ministered to, they were all, all in there in sexual sin. Right. And, you know, if, if the head is crooked, then the body is going to be crooked, too. Right. You know? Right. Or, or parts of the body. So if somebody in the church is in there fornicating and carrying on, that stuff is it's going to come in there and start attacking everybody else. Mm -hmm. So that's right on point. I just wanted to share that. I'm glad you did, girl. Those are extremely important points. We don't have to be afraid of it. We can take authority every morning, noon, and night, and it can't touch us. But the bottom line is when one person cracks the door in their life, it does affect everyone else. What's a perfect yeah. example of that, Lynette? Can you think of one yeah. perfect example in the Bible? Because I already got one in my mind. I want to see if you pick up on it. Oh, yeah. Are you okay. going to... You gonna you gonna share it or you want me to share? It? I forgot where I read it. I just read about it. It was um I think in the Old Testament that um somebody oh God said uh when you go in there to possess the land or whatever destroy it kill everybody and, and don't touch any of their stuff uh -huh. and one of them brought, brought something into the tent uh -huh. and, Take it. and and it's and um it, the whole it, it cursed the whole the whole um camp and 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 um. I forget who it was. It's Joshua uh, chapter seven, the Battle of AI. Yes, yes. The guy exposed who it was, but that he had he brought sin in the camp, and he said, "I I I took some of that this stuff and hid it in my tent." And what happened was, it got everybody in in there in trouble. He brought a curse in there, right? You know, and 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 it's the same today. You know, if you got somebody in your group or in the church that's in the stuff, it could be more than one person, it is going to affect everybody, and it, it blocks and stops the anointing, actually. Yeah, God can't do it it'll, it'll, it'll 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 God is in there. It won't stop it, but it will impair the anointing, because everybody else who is living right, that anointing is going to flow through them. But there comes interference in the flow because of the people that are in the group who are dabbling in sin. Right. That's right. That's right. But, I'll that's why huh? in the New Testament, that's why in the New Testament, Paul deals so harshly with church discipline. Not harshly, but he takes it serious. He's like, right. you can't even eat with such a one. And I was right. thinking about mm -hmm. that recently. I was like, I wonder if our churches are also in the state that they are in because we don't address Sense. We don't yeah. draw the line. You got it, Andrea. That's, that was going to be my very next point. We have no power because we have too much compromise. We have no power because too many of us as brothers and sisters are turning a blind eye to our brothers and sisters' known sins. Right. That's right. That's right. Listen. What did it say? I want to go down to where they uh, the, the, the folks wanted to, to fight AI, right? Okay. Joshua sent men. This is, uh, this is uh, I'm making a point, so, so go with me on this. Joshua chapter 7. Remember this, y'all. And then also mm -hmm. read Joshua chapter 8 on your own so you can see what brought about the victory afterwards. But this is the defeat. Mm -hmm. See, sin... And dabbling in sin, hidden sin, lies, secret sins brings about defeat. Listen, uh, verse 2. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Oh, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. Why? Because they could see they could easily win. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So there went up thither the people about three thousand, and they fled. Ah, check it out. About three thousand 
and they fled before the men of Ai. They ran with their tails tucked between their legs. And the men of Ai oh. smote of them about thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate, even unto Sherebim and <clears throat> uh, Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Now check out Joshua. Check out Joshua. Joshua doesn't have a clue, y'all. He doesn't know what's going on. He hasn't gotten the discernment. He hasn't seen the demons in action. He hasn't been given a vision, but he has connection with God. This is what happens. Joshua rent his clothes. He tore his clothes, fell to the earth upon his face uh, before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. And he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, alas, O God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites? To destroy us? Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. In other words, we'd be better off back there. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites, and he's just crying the blues, right? This is what the Lord says, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? What you doing laying down there? Get up, get up, get up. Okay, verse 11. Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff therefore the children of israel could not stand before their enemies but turn their backs before their enemies before uh because they were cursed neither will i be with you anymore except ye destroy the curse from among you now joshua didn't have the accursed thing the people in Israel didn't have the accursed thing. One man. Mm -hmm. One man. One okay. okay. And it goes all down, and he tells them to, to get the people out there, and he goes through all the different tribes, and then he finally tells them, okay, verse 19. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan mm -hmm. answered Joshua said, now see, I'm going to tell you this before I go any further. This is why confession and apology is not necessarily repentance. Just because you say you're sorry does not mean you're not going to have to pay the piper. Just because right. you apologize and, 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 and cry crocodile tears so you don't get a booty whooping doesn't mean you won't get a booty whooping. Listen right. to this. Verse 20. And Achan answered Joshua. He told the truth and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. When I saw mm -hmm. among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of mm. gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth, in the midst of my tent, and the mm -hmm. silver under it. Mm -hmm. This deep. Mm -hmm. So Joshua sent messengers. There's some reason we're sharing this. Some reason we're sharing this, y'all. Oh, yeah. I don't know who it is oh, yeah. in our group, but one of you guys need to hear this. This is your warning. You're going to have to stop toying and tinkering around with your little demon toys. Your little demonic toys are going to be yeah. a ruin if you don't stop. Listen. So Joshua okay. sent messengers and they ran unto the tent and behold it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua. And all the children of Israel laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan 
the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Acorn. Now, I'm going to tell you this, y'all. If one of those family members had come to Joshua and said, please have mercy on our household, Achan has done this, that, and the other, God would not right. destroy that whole family. Okay. That's why you cannot afford to wink and hide your brothers and sisters' sins like it's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. You don't tell, I won't tell. Just keep it on the down low, baby, and we're good to go. No. You don't and God, and God's going to expose it every time. Right. 25. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned them with stones and burned them with fire. After they had stoned them with stone, he burned them with fire after they had stoned them. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. It, had, it took all that for God's anger to turn away. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor to this day. Listen, y'all. You cannot. God understands propensities. God understands our weaknesses. God understands a whole lot of stuff. But he also understands when we really are trying to live right and when we're not. Mm -hmm. He gets that. He knows what's in our heart more than we do. When we think yep. we want to follow God, then God knows we want to follow that weenie over there and that weenie over there and that booty over here and that booty over here and them boobs over there and that boobs over there. He knows what we want to follow. He knows. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you this. The Bible says, if you confess, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't want to misquote, so I'm paraphrasing. If you confess your sins, if you open up, and, and bring your sins to the light. God will cover you and your sin. Yeah. But if you hide your sin. And act like everything's honky dory. You and God are good. Yeah, yeah. We in like Flynn. Yeah. Yeah, we good homies. Me and the Lord. Yeah, and I'm living right. And we got it going on. And I'm blessed. Too blessed to be stressed. And I'm highly favored. And all of that. And you know, don't yeah. go well. That your hands, your feet, your body is dirty. That's right. Guess what? One day, when you least expect it, if you don't get a handle on it real quick, baby, God will expose it. See, we yes, as human yes. beings, we know what it's like to be weak. So we tend to pat each other on the back and comfort each other and say, yeah, it's going to be all right. This is not what we were supposed to go today, y'all. We were supposed to pray about the politics, the land, the leaders, the powers that be, which we still will do. But for some reason, for that dream to hit me like it did and for God to give me this scripture, this is where we're supposed to go. Somebody yep. in our group, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to tell you this. God will either get you to clean your act up, or through hook or crook, God will remove you from our group. I won't do it because you ain't my people. You God's people. But God will remove you to stop the flow of the demonic from infiltrating his anointed group until you get it together. So I would advise you to get it together now before it comes to that where everybody knows who you are. Get it together now before exposure happens. Because when a Amen. warning like this comes, exposure is next. That's right. Please. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Amen. that is what we have to remember. See, we can be merciful with each other, understanding with each other, patient with each other, yes. Restore such an one, considering yourself, lest thou fall into the same type of temptation. Yeah, we get that. But there comes a point where God says, my spirit will not always strive with you. 
and I will never forget the night I left Milton's house. The night, y'all, I done told y'all about this, so I, I ain't hiding nothing. I tell my business to help y'all not fall into any mess. But I fell weak, and I started getting comfortable with the weak. And God saw me getting comfortable, and I always said, Lord, don't ever let me get comfortable with sin. Mm. And as I was driving home, I felt for the one, the one time in my life, I felt God's wrath. Y'all, it scared the boo-boo out of me. Shortly after that, I broke up with Milton and wiped him off my mat. And because I did it for God's sake, God brought it back the way he wanted it and blessed us with a beautiful marriage. But we, had, I, we were apart from each other almost a year. And in my mind, I thought it was for good. Honestly. As in love with him as I was, I thought it was for good. But I was willing to let go of Milton because I never wanted God to let go of me. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. So I'm saying that to let you know we all have our moments of weakness. We all have our times of failures. We all fall short of the glory of God. This is not a judgmental message. This is a warning from God. When he starts giving dreams like that, for me to see that man playing with that other man's privates and pouring oil and messing with it and just enjoying. And I'm like, why am I seeing this? I don't know who this is about or if you're watching the stuff or if you're talking about it or enjoy watching movies with that in it, whatever, or participating, whatever the case is, whoever you are, stop before Cut God it stops you. Cut it off. Cut it off. And I am in agreement with that, and I know that that's true. And I feel the Spirit of the Lord using me right now to say this. And Father, don't let me say anything out of my mouth that you did not say. I do not want to do that, Lord. I don't want to, I do not want to step out and say anything that you didn't, you didn't have me to say. Amen. I hear God saying that in these days, we are in judgment. He says, you are in, you have entered into my judgment, say of the Lord. And I will deal with my own house first because judgment begins in my house first, says the Lord. Right. And you cannot, you will not escape my wrath. For I am God and I see everything. My name is El Roy, which means the God who sees. God says, I, I see you. I know who you are. And you need to stop what you're doing and spare yourself the embarrassment and the shame and the humiliation. Because if you don't, I will expose you, say of God. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father God, bring back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord, for your support. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank so, you, I Thank think you, you guys have heard what God had to say. That put the period, that put the nail in the coffin. I hope y'all heard it. I want to find none of y'all in that coffin here. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank I want you, Lord. all of us to celebrate. And, 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 just, and, and just an exhortation, God is saying, you know, have I not said that my children, I will that you not sin, but if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father, that if you confess your sins, that he is faithful and just to wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Why will you continue to stay in sin? God has also said with this warning, this is also saying, Come unto me. Don't run from me. Run to me. I have promised you right. that I will forgive you. Right. But if you continue, if you continue, like David said, if I had, if I had had not regarded sin, if I had regarded sin in my heart, God would have let me be afflicted. But because he confessed his sin and he was open and honest with the Lord, God did not afflict him. But he said, if he had regarded it, if he tried to hide it. Try to play with it. Try to say, hey, oh, let me keep it on the down low, like Sister Pat said. Trying to be sneaky about it. You can't do this here, this, that, that, that here, over here. You can't fake this thing. This is, this, you got to be true to this. You can't fake from God. If you're dirty, God don't get you. Right. And he don't want to, he don't want it. That's what he's saying. That this is in love. He doesn't want to, but he will. Don't get him twisted. Right. He will get you. That's right. So he's saying, if you know you're doing something, 
it ain't right, you're struggling with something, whether it's sexual sin or whatever it is, pornography, whatever it is, whatever it is, stop it, because right now the judgment is in the land, right. and people are dying, people are, people gotten, people, God is cutting folks off, go to Psalm 37, if you think he's playing, God ain't playing with you, whoever it is, he ain't playing with you. That's right. But he also wants you to know he loves you and give you an opportunity to just, you know, between you and him, you can say, Daddy, I, you know what? I have, I heard you, and I don't want to get in trouble. Be a put on blast like that. Help me stop doing what I'm doing. It's me, Lord. It's me. Like, what's his name? What came forth and said, I, I took and hid it in my tent. Okay, I don't want to, you know, it's a go that far, Lord. I, I know it's me. Please help me. Stop doing because he does understand our weakness. Yes, he does. Right. But he, what he does not, what he does not tolerate, is trying to be slick and thinking you hide something. He don't like that at all. Right. I'm right. Not and, and I'm going to tell you this, y'all. There are some times when you don't have to go running to your brothers and sisters and confessing, but if you take it to God, and mm -hmm. after you take it to God, you fight tooth and nail. To get your act right, see what that that thing that uh, the scripture that Lynette quoted. He is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins. What's the second half of that? And to cleanse us, yeah, from all Thank unrighteousness. You. That's the part a lot of us forget. We want to confess our our sins and think it stops there. No, there's a cleansing that takes place after that. A purification process. And it is a process. Yes. And you must cooperate with the cleansing. If your mama puts you in the bathtub and washes your body, you are one or two years old and they got you in the tub or the sink washing your body. If you fight her, it's going to be a much longer process getting your butt cleaned up. But if right. you sit there and cooperate, You'll be in and out in a, in a split second. It'll be over with. Don't yes, fight man. God on him cleaning you and cleansing you from all unrighteousness. If he's cleansing you and you're fighting him tooth and nail, he will remove his hand and say, have it your way. Reprobate. Amen. Amen. And that's it. Amen. I'm going to stop there. I'm not, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. But I just feel like, see, years ago, a oh lot I can't let this go. Years ago, when, uh, uh, like I told you guys, when I messed up with Milton, after I had that feeling of wrath on me, coming home, and I parked the car and asked God to have mercy, and I will do whatever it takes to get it right. That following Sunday, I believe it was within that that same week or two, I went to church. And there was a guy, a guest speaker. And boy, you talk about, I was squirming. I never had a message come at me like that. That man was Ooh. all in my business, all in my mail. And I'm looking around to see if anybody can tell it's me. That man had a warning from God. It scared the boo-boo out of me. I said, oh, Lord, from wrath to warning, I better really stop now. And I got... I. I broke up with Milton quick, fast, and hurry. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, see, <laughs> he loves his sons and daughters. If we don't receive his chastisement, we're bastards. Yeah. But if we want to be his sons and daughters, we must receive his correction as well as his little pats on the back. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's what I want to share with you. I know what it's like to hear a message like this and be uncomfortable. I've been there. So I'm not talking to somebody that always had it together, y'all. But I know what it's like to cut some things out of my life. What does Jesus say? If your eye offend, you pluck it out. If your hand offend, you cut it off. That means anything in your life that has become a stumbling block, get rid of it. Don't tinker with it. I'm just even talking about this is reminding me of times when God has called me out when I was not walking right. Kathy, come to that 
uh, it, it reminds me the fear of the Lord is something that, that we all need. There's a lot of people that are playing the same game. Right. And uh, it's just it's just reminding me, God is just letting me know that I'm I'm very serious about this. Right. People don't when he said that this, you know, last year, twenty twenty was exposure, this is a year of uh judgment. Judgment. Mm -hmm. judgment. 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 He's hearing that. It's judgment. That's right. So that means if you keep playing around and you think you can get away with stuff because ain't nothing happened to you yet. Back to them days is over, baby. Those days are over. Right. Right. It's like God says in his word, my people slide back like a backsliding heifer. And sometimes right. we don't realize we're backslidden because we don't realize that it doesn't really bother us what we're doing. We just are trying not to because we don't want a booty whooping. But you got to get to the point. You know you've grown when you get to the point you don't want to do it because God doesn't want you to do it, period. Because it's not right, period. Because you want to right. be found right in him, pleasing to him, period. Not because you don't want that belt on your butt. That's not a reason to do right. It's, it's, a, it's a starting point to get you to thinking right. But you got to want to please God more than you don't want the booty whooping. That's got to be even more important to you than not getting chastised. So whatever you do, draw near to God. Confess to God and get your butt straight. That song that came to my mind, Slip Sliding Away, Slip Sliding yeah. Away. We don't realize sometimes when we're sliding backwards. When the church is moving forward and we're standing still, what ends up happening is we're ending up going further and further backwards. As the church moves forward, we're further and further behind. That's a backsliding action that we're not aware of because it's so subtle. It's in such slow motion. We don't realize we're literally backsliding. So be very careful. And I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pray for whoever you are, whether you are in our group and or on YouTube. Father, I ask you right now to have mercy. I ask you, Lord, even in your judgment, give dreams, give all kind of warnings, Father, before you pass judgment. Please do everything you can to help each and every one of us not only get straight, but stay straight. In the Amen. name of Jesus, I pray. I mean, readjust our innermost motives of our hearts so that our desire is your desire and not just the fear of being spanked. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Bless us, Father. Bless each and every one of us that has heard these warnings. In, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your love reaching out to warn your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.